Do you ever fantasize about being killed? This is a way of life. This will get started in 1998. It was the tail end of 97. I had a band called Example 24. Um, we were a punk band. That band was having a really bad breakup. was 25 minutes. Then we played our entire set to no one. Let's go home. When we 
got back from Canada, we felt confident enough to really start building our own fan base in Jersey. Dan put together an Angel Fire page. It was so rudimentary. We would go into like AOL chat groups for like bands within our genre. People into those bands were going to be into what we were doing and we knew it. So we would hit those people up. They had a bunch of people there, like a couple hundred probably, singing along to a band that it was like their first or second show ever. So that just blew my mind that they had a fan base already. success that Dean and I set out to achieve during Example 24, so I really wanted Dean to be part of that. Interesting gig offer. Tower Records, Route 17, Paramus, New Jersey. The entire place was packed. People were lining the outside windows. There were people all in the aisles and the book sections. There were people like crowd surfing, like over the book shelves. Moon, but now I'm not. I remember having fun. I also remember big egos, self-obsession, and self-importance. There was a consensus that the world is not the way it should be. Those feelings should have been a stepping stone to lead the lives you want to lead. But sadly, in most cases, it was not. Scott asked me one night if I would be interested in playing some keys with Witch Moon since their keyboard player Dean had moved over to drums and they could have live drums. He's got an envelope for me from Craig. It's got a bunch of CDs in it. It's labeled the Keyboard Masseuse. And we just kept running through the tunes. You know, Dean was showing me the keyboard parts and then he would go to the drums and play. Uh, one of the guys didn't really know music. So I said, oh yeah, that's an F. And he looked at me and said, what the fuck is an F? Pretty much they all had fuck you attitudes and it was great, but they, they played great tunes. And you know, Craig was a hell of a fucking songwriter, but also as a group, they, they were a fucking riot, man. <laughs> Uh, May of 1999, this guy hands me the CD and he just goes, Wish Moon will change your life. There's no way he knew exactly like, how much he would. I get on the, the website, warning, Wish Moon has been deemed a, a subversive bad. I forget exactly what it said, but it was like some scary shit. show and Boundbrook was coming up. It's, it's this huge crowd of like everybody that knows each other and Sean was playing uh, keys. I bumped into Craig and I went, oh Craig, Craig, what's up? So he goes, oh, 
you're, you're Wonka 666, you're Wonka from online. He started introducing me to people like, this is Wonka, and that's how I became Wonka in that one fell swoop. Gidget Gain, who had been in Marilyn Manson, came out to sing a few tunes. And Gidget didn't know he was playing this retro game, Craig drove a while, like an hour or two, something like that, and pretty much kidnapped him. Hung out for a few minutes and then just went for a walk. And he was walking all the fuck over Wally. Then we get on stage and he like gets to my ear. And then their time was up and they were told that they were done. Okay, fuck it, we're gonna do the way out. And the owner and the sound guy were fucking which effectively became the band in New Jersey show. The dude just like, cut Craig's mic. Craig's just saying, fuck it, drops the mic, and the, like, he gets the crowd on, the crowd starts singing. time is when we became friends with a band called Sickle. The guitars for Sickle, Steve, became really fast friends with us. I saw which one play, I was like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in the wrong band. I knew it. Dan and, and Scott came to me and they're like, you know how to play keyboard? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know how to. I didn't know how to play keyboard. Steve had a total crash course. I'm learning all the songs, busting my ass to, you know, figure it out. Played in Canada to like a crazy crowd. Oh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I remember them being so much better mm -hmm. now that they had a drummer. And yeah. that's when they added Bishop. Bishop. Mercedes <laughs> 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 remembers this. <laughs> um, so then they had a keyboard player. One by one, without even really thinking about it, we all just start peeing into the Niagara Falls at three in the morning. Kill the fucking American Pigs tour. <laughs> yeah, come see the little bitches play before they go to jail. <laughs> Directly after that, we were leaving for Milwaukee Metal Fest. It's Milwaukee Metal Fest. Oh my god, yes. Oh. They were having this crazy heat wave. I'm gonna die on the road to, of like hunger and heat exhaustion. I'm about to piss on the side of the car. Rangers! Oh, Jesus! God damn it! I do want this. I gotta get some coffee. Scott, I gotta get some coffee. I drove to Ohio and I've been driving for six hours. Look at me. I'm good. I'm filming nothing. I'm gonna videotape someone with a video camera. Is there nothing going on somewhere that I can know about the film? I try to get Dean to suck Mr. Wiggles. Like summer camp. Oh, Mr. Wiggles? Hi. Close the back. Have a nice night. Mr. Wiggles. Hey, Mr. Wiggles. Hey, Mr. Wiggles. Hey, Mr. Wiggles. Hey, Mr. Wi
Mr. Front Seat, put it in my eyes. Blast. Mr. Front Seat playing the loud music in my ears. Shot Mr. Front Seat having all the leg room. And Mr. Front Seat <laughs> being a <laughs> fucking... <laughs> We're from Jersey. It's been a long fucking ride. A very long fucking ride. This place is the size of a football field. It's an arena. keyboard stand you can't see anything there's a couple like little bunk lights i'm in the back watching all of my bandmates walk and i just see one by one going down i fell over and we realized we were dogpiling on danny filth 20 years later i still get emails from people from that show there was just a line of people just a line standing behind us waiting for autographs <laughs> became part of this metal fest circuit because the next one was in San Antonio. We played with Danzig and SOD. There was management coming to check us out. There were six of us at this point in the van and we drive all the way to San Antonio. It's a 36 hour trip to uh, our hotel in San Antonio. Craig didn't like to get oil changes ever. No, like, like ever. I had never changed the oil ever. Car breaks down. The fucking van starts to billow smoke. Billowing smoke everywhere. And we're like, Steve, you're on fire. Remember fucking a truck going by and dude's just yelling, fags. Directly after that, we got on the road and then we were attacked by killer bees. <laughs> we saw a UFO in Texas. It was the first time I got to meet Danzig. We did the river walk and that, like, first of all, that's just beautiful. You know, we take pictures with the waitresses and that was really cool because you get people who are like, they're in a band. They're obviously in a band and they're touring here. So let's, you know, something. It was like nonstop. And then it was get on stage and go nonstop. <laughs> there was no stopping the van to go to the bathroom. If you were to go to the bathroom, that's why you buy wide mouth soda bottles. Gatorade bottles if you can fit it in. It wasn't like fucking around. Like you don't get in that van to go sightseeing. We used to promote outside of every show, flyering, 
CDs, stickers. We have fans in Brazil, all over the fucking country, and all over the world. From what I was told, we had a million downloads on Napster. If you want to fucking make it, you fucking do the work. Put the time in. 1027 WNEW. Ron says. We just got this. You can play it straight off the website. Cool. Witchmoon.com. These dudes are like fucking titans. They're up there with fucking like corn and slayer. Got to actually sit there and listen to them hash out riffs. I ended up becoming friends with Craig. Really cool dude. Ultra talented. He went on tour and he gave me his his actual rehearsal room for two and a half years. He is an artist in, I mean, every sense of the word. He is one of my best friends in the whole world. When I watched one of his videos of him on tour, as soon as I finished watching it, I started booking my own tour. My band back then had asked Craig to come up and do some guest vocals in the studio, and surprisingly enough, he said yes. He asked my band to come up and do one of our first out-of-state shows. I had one of the, the only original Witch Moon home videos. The band was uh, really approachable. You could easily email them. You could have a chat with them, talk about their music. I was just taken back by them completely. Burn was very, very sweet. You know, your music reached a lot of people in a lot of different places. I think he was from somewhere around Seattle, Washington, and I'm up here in Canada. It was something that was so completely different that I've never heard before. They were cool. I went to diners with them a bunch of times. I felt like it meant that I was accepted by people that I thought were really cool. Because rock and roll doesn't make anybody cool. Cool people just happen to get involved in rock and roll. That's the point that we started getting late label interest. I see the singer Skin Lab on the stage, checking us out. He's getting pretty into the music. Well, I just talked to him a few minutes ago, and he wants to get in touch with us and get us a deal. Steve shopped us to Roadrunner. We got a gig playing Lemoore in Brooklyn. I was up looking up like six girls that night because I'm a dirty, dirty man. I was wiring chicken bones to our drum set, and I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. Roadrunner Records A&R. And I just oh, fucking shit, here it comes. This is the break. This is, this is where it happens, you know, right now. So cut it in half. They would listen to like 30 seconds and be like, no, 
no part of this, no. You miss a no, you miss something, and someone would fuck up, and then you'd have to be like, all right, let's start again. This turned into strip recording. Yeah, there's a couple pictures of me out there naked. I was naked at one point. I think um, I got a cape. Ivanka was running around the studio, which is a Dracula cape on, and nothing else whatsoever. Every day was into New York, talk with Roadrunner, out of New York, start recording into the fucking night. It's like being in a house, you know. We started collecting these chicken bones. That was like a punishment if you fucked up. It was, oh, you had to smell the bone jar. We play another show in New York. Get in the car, go to a diner, get back on the road, go the fuck out to, like, Cleveland. I think this is also the night that uh, Craig, I think, ate a cigarette of mine. <laughs> like, he grabbed, like, I would go to smoke, and he would grab my cigarette and just go... Rum, 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 rum. Club. It was like an eight foot roof with like a three foot stage. There was like a pipe and it was everything I could do not to just grab this like sprinkler pipe or whatever and swing from it and try and pull it out of the fucking ceiling. <laughs> stadium seating and this huge beautiful stage and we went in and just kind of like fucked shit up like covering ourselves in powder and wrapping ourselves in electrical tape i was thinking we should get like tons of nudie girls there were kids like dancing in this little and i just remember starting to pull them up on the stage that might have been one of like the the big introductions to the the connecticut crew and all those kids as I came into the band was, you know, where it started to come to a head. So apparently we had made a, um, sort of like a, a pack. We were supposed to like have each other's backs. That was like our agreement. They were yeah. our vibes, they you were know what I mean? They were our brothers. They were our sister band. Like, you know, well, if you guys get signed, we'll help you. And if, if you guys get signed, we'll help you. Yeah. Whoever makes it, you know, let's help the other one out. We actually were the ones that, um, got signed first. They, all the press kits and everything we got, got to them, they just, they never gave to the record company. We actually did pass along the demo um, to the people at the record label. After that point, it definitely was out of our hands. There was a lot of miscommunication and, and it, it sucks that it happened that way. Looking back, I, I can't be mad about that shit, you know? Uh, we had to make our own way. Do they have to be inside or gang side? <laughs> When we started having crazy parties and shit like that there, that's when things just started to go sideways. Fans in the area found out about it, so like, it went very quickly from being uh, a rehearsal studio to... Let's have fucking parties at the studio. When we played Marshmallow Meltdown, that was... We were, we were in a weird place in the band. So Dan and I drove down and, and they said, you guys get the hotel rooms. And <laughs> Dan and I were like, fuck it, do you guys have a suite? And they went, no, well, but we have this room, which was like kind of like a honeymoon room. It was two good sized beds and then like a weird platform up with like lattice work around it and this huge like whirlpool jacuzzi bathtub thing. Um, <laughs> we got that and then I got a second room for everyone else. So at this point we were talking to Roadrunner Records and we were pretty much under the impression 
uh, that all that was left was to come in and sign a contract. Like, we were that sure. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to tattoo my hands. And I remember fucking Craig walking by or, and seeing him and just being like, you're so fucking dumb, man. And that's where, I mean, that's where these guys came from. So we get back, and Dan and I were like, you know, fuck this, we're gonna, <laughs> let's get the fucking jacuzzi. His feet were up by my side, my feet were by his, and we just fucking chilled in this, like, amazing jacuzzi tub thing. And we were, like, ah, oh, comfortable and whatever. Craig comes over, knocks on the door. He's like, you got a fucking jacuzzi, you piece of shit? Our fucking bathroom mirror has bullet holes in it, and you have a fucking jacuzzi. Which mode kicks fucking ass? They own the fucking East Coast! Dan and I had hit a point of, of just wanting to have fun. There was a chair lodged in the wall, like 10 feet in the air. We get some alcohol and shit and fucking drink. Drinking all the time in the studio. We started spray painting the walls. The entire foyer was covered in pages from the Bible. There was just this, like, abandoned hatchback in the parking lot. And the entire thing was smashed to pieces. I just jumped up and down the hood a bit, and then I kicked in the windshield of this car. All of a sudden, we started getting phone calls. You're skipping practice. We had a band meeting. Band breakup was nasty. Red-faced, screaming. We had our final gig in New Jersey on May 28th, 1999, right after the gig. We barely said a word to each other. Craig kicked me and Dan out of the band. It was done. The door was closed. I immediately thought to call Steve from Skin Lab. That night, he put me on the phone with Chris, guitarist for N17. Dean started focusing just more on kind of putting his personal life back together. Dan is tattooing for a living and he's phenomenal. Steve went on to a long career in like restaurant management. What the fuck has Wonka done since which? Doesn't he run a satanic temple? He does run a satanic temple. <laughs> and good on him for it. So Scott is uh do you want to take a Is uh, another troll dude. We'll go to the land and see, and get some coffee. You want to go back to my house and, and view a film? I would really like to just go to a fucking diner with him and chain smoke and, and talk about just shit, man. I've missed that kid for years, and I'm just, it's one of these moments where you're an asshole for not calling them. Yeah, uh, fuck it, I got nothing else to say. <laughs>